Boys and girls, hello and welcome. Mr. Pedersen here. And as many of you know, I love animals. And I keep many reptiles as pets at my home. And reptiles are so awesome. They come from all over the world. We have many species where we live. And one thing about reptiles is that they're cold-blooded. And they rely on the sunlight or heat from other places to survive. And the first animal that we're going to look at here is a bearded dragon. And more specifically, our objective today is to learn about different adaptations that these reptiles that I'm going to show you use to survive and live a happy life. So we're going to look at my bearded dragon reptar here. She's looking around, and I'll talk to you a little bit about the awesome bearded dragon, and then we'll get into some more animals. Stay tuned. All right, so the first animal we're going to look at is my bearded dragon reptar. And bearded dragons come from Australia. And if you know where Australia is, it's on the eastern hemisphere of the world. We live in the western hemisphere, but Australia is one of our seven continents. And it is also a country, too. But bearded dragons live in very arid and dry environments. So they've adapted to live in an environment that doesn't have much water. And they need to survive in those places so one thing that a bearded dragon has adapted to do is live and eat vegetables vegetation fruit and see she's getting excited and they also eat insects too another adaptation that they have are these crazy spikes they're not very hard but if a predator wants to turn them into prey they'll try to bite onto the bearded dragon and the bearded dragon will puff out its skin and puff out its throat. That's why they call it a bearded dragon. Its beard sometimes puffs out. And it won't want to b bite into them because of all these crazy spikes on it. So another adaptation that they have is that they can go a long time without water. They get most of their water from eating vegetables, plants, and other things. But they still do drink. And also, a bearded dragon can change colors too so to blend in with its surroundings sometimes they change colors depending on the temperature they turn really dark when it's not as hot out and their color turns like black like the chin on it and that'll help them absorb some more heat so this is the bearded dragon awesome animal you can see she's really friendly and uh, that's it for the bearded dragon so cool Something else I want to mention about the bearded dragon is that they can also stand and run on their back two legs. So if they're facing a predator and they need to get away super fast, they can stand on their back two legs. She can't demonstrate, but they run away super fast. And also, they can withstand very high temperatures. So they sit on rocks and stuff, and they can really handle a lot of heat. I love it and that's how they digest their food they stay warm because they're cold-blooded hey boys and girls so we're gonna keep moving on here and look at some different awesome animals and now we're really gonna focus on pythons which is a type of snake and people hear pythons they get scared but it's really not the case the, they come in all different sizes they could be very small and some do or do get very large too so we're gonna look at many different types of pythons today and learn about their adaptations so some different adaptations of pythons in general is that first off they're constrictors so when they're looking for their prey and they grab it with their teeth and then they wrap around it to uh, obtain it and then they eat it whole so that's another adaptation pythons eat their prey whole so cool next adaptation of the python is that they use their tongue to smell so they collect these little dust particles on their tongue and that's how they smell where the prey is or where they are in their surroundings. Also, another adaptation of the python is that they have sensory heat pits around their top lip. So that's how they can see in thermal vision. They see when a little animal is coming by, and that's when they know. They see that. They go for it because most of the time they're opportunistic, which means that they take the opportunity if they see something because they don't know when they're going to get their next meal, right? It's tough out there in the wild. 
last adaptation of the of the Python in general that you can add to your uh, uh, things for the same about Pythons when we're comparing and contrasting is that they can they have great nocturnal vision too so they can see at night and that's what makes them such good predators because they have those thermal heat pits and they have great vision at night and smell and that's when they're looking for something to eat so let's take a look at some different pythons it's gonna be cool stay tuned alright so for, for the first python species we're gonna be looking at it's called the ball python and you could already see why it's called the ball python they come from West Africa and it's because they ball up like this it's also called the royal python but some that should be your first adaptation right there of the ball python is that they ball up like this to avoid becoming a prey of another animal so that's how they kinda hide they also have this great camouflage pattern to uh, blend in with their surroundings and their environment you can see he's coming out to look and you can see those dots on the mouth and that's the sensory heat pits that's how they can sense their prey and he's not flicking his tongue too much but Yep, you can see it a little bit there, and he's tasting, seeing what's going on, on around him. But the ball pythons are super cool. They spend most of their time underground. That's another thing that they've adapted to do in their environment, is they live underground for shelter. And that's how they hide from prey, uh, from predators during the day, excuse me. And that's where they also find most of their food, uh, which are small mammals, uh, small like uh, rats and mice and things like that. So they live underground, and when he feel, they feel more safe, they come out, stretch out a little bit. This is just a small one, a baby. I'll show you a little bit bigger ball python, so let's take a look. All right, so here's a bigger ball python. This is an adult female, and this is about as big as they get, about four to five feet, sometimes a little bit larger. We can see they have this. One more thing about the ball python is that they can survive a pretty long time without water, so if it gets really dry, and this is for pretty much most snakes, but we're looking at... Alright, so now we're looking at one of my other favorite snake species. It's a python. This is the Borneo short-tailed python. Hence the name, they come from Borneo, which is in Southeast Asia. And you can see this is a lot thicker, bigger-bodied snake than our ball python. They get a little bit bigger than this. This is a female, so the females are always a little larger. But one thing about the Borneo short-tailed python is that they're ambush predators, like most pythons, but the Borneo short-tailed python sits and waits for its prey to come by. So it sits in a swampy area or underneath leaves, so that's how it blends in with its surroundings and its environment. The Borneo short-tailed python has adapted to live on the ground, and it's also adapted to be extremely strong and powerful. So it uses this huge body to overpower its prey. That's one of its adaptations. Also, is that it uses this thick, strong body to overpower its prey when it constricts around it. And it wants to make sure it's really going to hold on to it because it doesn't know when it's going to get its next meal. It's, like I said, it's, it's tough out there in the, in, the, in the wild. So you see super thick body on this snake, very powerful. Also, the Borneo short-tailed python has adapted to live in very humid environments. In Southeast Asia, more specifically Borneo, it's very, very humid and hot, so it can survive in those types of areas. Also, the Borneo short-tailed python has adapted to live on the ground, like I said. It's going to sit there and wait for something to come by, and when it does, it's not going to let it get away. <laughs> this is the Borneo short-tailed python. Awesome, beautiful species. And you can see this pattern that it has is also going to help it survive by blending in under the leaves. They also sit and have adapted to wait in water, too, which is super cool. So they sit and wait in these wet environments. And they also have this very thick skin. So they've adapted to have this super thick skin. So if, a, if something bites it or it gets attacked by a predator, it's going to hold up because they're tough. This is the Borneo short-tailed python. Love them. Let's keep going. All right, saving some of the best and coolest species for last. Here we have the green tree python coming from both Australia, the very north tip of Australia, and Papua New Guinea. And Papua New Guinea is another 
country in Southeast Asia, very close to Australia, small island. And the green tree python, as you can see, it has this amazing green coloring. That's its number one adaptation right there. It's green in color to blend in in the rainforest and hide from predators, which is its number one thing. Next adaptation of the green tree python, I'll try and get it situated here to show you. If not, you're just going to have to believe me, <laughs> is this tail that's a different color. And they call that uh, a tail for caudal luring. But in basic terms, it uses its tail to attract uh, prey for it to eat. So it sits there at night and it wiggles that little tail, hoping for something to come by, thinking it's a worm. And that's one of its adaptations. It has that little tail on the end that it wiggles at night to help it attract the prey for it to wrap around and eat. So leading to my next point, we have the green tree python's uh, teeth. All snakes have teeth and the green tree python has some pretty large ones. So it needs to have these big teeth not only to defend it itself, but also it needs to be able to really hold on to a prey item if it catches it because like we said, these pythons, it's tough. We, they don't know when their next meal is going to be. And the green tree python has some pretty big fangs and that's going to help it hold on to its prey. Green tree python also has adapted to live in very uh, humid environments. So in Papua New Guinea it's very hot and very humid. They live in the mountains and in the trees. There's many different types of them. But green tree python, awesome species also Another adaptation of the green tree python, I don't know if you've seen, this is where it lives in this uh, enclosure back here. If you've seen the other videos, if you want to go back, you can see it, how it sits on the branch. So it's adapted to blend in and sit on the branch just looking like a pile of leaves or something. Just staying very still and blending in with the surroundings. This is the green tree python from Papua New Guinea. Awesome species. I got one more for you guys. I think it's going to be exciting. All right, last but certainly not least, we have a really big python here. This is the reticulated python. Reticulated python. And that all that means is that it just has a reticulated or repeating pattern. Super intelligent snake species. You can see this one is about 10 feet long. But the reticulated python is the largest snake species in the world. And the biggest one ever recorded was almost 30 feet long coming from all over Southeast Asia. The reticulated python is just known for its massive size. This one's still pretty small. They come in all different shapes and sizes, but we're showing you this one here. It's a young female. And the reticulated python's first adaptation is that it is going to just get huge and they're super strong. So it's going to be able to do a few things. It's going to help it eat really large prey items so that's one adaptation its huge size is going to help it eat something really big so that it can grow really big so another adaptation once they get really huge there's not much else that can eat a, a huge reticulated python they're pretty hot, far up on the food chain so they're holding a lot of weight out there in the wild in southeast asia and they come from countries like sumatra borneo all throughout indonesia Thailand, all those different places, very cool. And the green tree, uh, reticulated python, excuse me, has adapted to live in these very humid and hot environments. Another adaptation of the reticulated python is that they're great climbers, they're great swimmers, they can pretty much do it all. And another awesome adaptation of the reticulated python that I find really cool is that they sit and in water with just their head poking out so they have enough room to breathe. And what they do is they sit and wait for something come to come by and come get a drink. And that's when they strike, they wrap around it, they overpower it with their huge body. And that's what's gonna really help the reticulated python have shelter so it can hide. And it's gonna help it have a place hey everyone, to everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something a little bit new and different. You're going to use that information to fill out the Compare and Contrast Organizer. Follow the instructions. Let us know if you need any help. Thanks for watching.